If you've ever opened a can of paint, stain, or finish to find a rusted, dried out, unusable mess like this, stay tuned. We're going to look at some ways to help extend the shelf life of these items and wood fillers too. We're also including tips to help make working with these products just a little easier. All this and more right now here on Shop Tales and Lore. Paints and stains spoil mainly because air and moisture get into the container. The first step in preventing this is to get an effective seal before storing the product, which starts with getting the mating surfaces of the lid and can rim as clean as possible. Here's a trick we learned from an old school house painter many years ago. When opening a new can, punch a couple of holes in the channel of the rim. This is easily done with a couple of wax on a 10 or 12 penny box nail. Before returning the can to the shelf, wipe the rim and lid with a rag soaked in a solvent appropriate for the product. The holes allow any remaining paint or finish to drain from the rim back into the can. With no puddles or chunks of finish to prevent the lid from sealing, little to no air will be able to pass in and out of the container. Believe it or not, technique also matters when replacing the lid. If the can rim and lid are thoroughly clean, you should be able to press the lid down by hand and get an effective seal. If more force is needed, use a mallet. If nothing else is available, a steel hammer will work, but always use it in conjunction with a stick or some other buffer to protect the lid. The quickest way to destroy the can's ability to form a seal is to beat on the lid with a claw hammer. Stains get their color from dyes, powdered pigments, or sometimes both. The dye-based stains tend to stay in solution and are usually ready to use with little or no stirring. On the other hand, pigment-based stains generally separate when stored for any length of time with the pigment settling to the bottom of the can. If this pigment is not thoroughly mixed back into the solvent or binder liquid, noticeable color variations can result from one staining session to the next. No amount of stirring with a stick or other hard object will retrieve all of the pigment from the seam and ridges at the bottom of the can. A soft bristle brush works much better. These chipping brushes from the home center work great and are inexpensive enough to be treated as single-use disposables. Transferring paints and finishes from one container to another has its own set of problems, mostly involving spills or, again, filling the can's rim with the product, which has to be cleaned up. Commercial pouring spouts like this one can be handy, but at the end of the day aren't a huge time saver because they need to be cleaned as well. Small disposable drinking cups are a pretty effective solution. Most paper and some plastic cups hold up well even with solvent-based finishes, but the cheaper and thinner plastic versions can melt when used in lacquers. If you go with the paper type, try to find some that have minimal decorative printing on them. We've noticed that solvent-based finishes can cause the inks used in the printing to run and get into the product, which may lead to unwanted color variations, etc. Whether paper or plastic, one way to minimize these issues is to never use the same cup more than once. Wood fillers have their own set of problems, and the relatively short shelf life of some of these products can be frustrating. For decades now, manufacturers of solvent-based fillers have placed the can's lid on the bottom in relation to how the label is printed, which is an effort to keep the filler closest to the lid moistened by the solvent. But eventually, most of these products, including these post-finishing putties, harden to the point that they seem unusable. The good news is that adding a dab of the appropriate solvent to the can can often rejuvenate these fillers so they can be used in a pinch. 
Many contain acetone, and a few drops is usually enough to make the filler pliable enough to use. Be sure to check the ingredients of your wood filler for compatibility with the solvent you intend to use. Water-based fillers, like this spackling compound, can often be brought back to life by mixing in a few drops of water. And again, as with any finishing or filler product, be sure to check and clean the rim and lid of the can before putting it away. Here's a bonus tip for using water-based paints, especially in hot weather. Soak a rag or small towel in water, wring out the excess, and cover the top of the container as best you can. Remoisten the towel as needed. This will help keep the paint from skinning over on top and works equally well for brush or spray applications. For larger containers such as 5-gallon buckets, a discarded bath towel works great.